Hey everyone, James here and welcome to a little behind the scenes on making the shard monsters. This is a little sneak peek of the Tesla tick and I just want to do a quick show off today of how I do the shading. Uh, I haven't always done this, this is uh, more of a newer technique so if you do study all my drawings then of course you'll you'll not see this exactly but um, just to give people an example, right, we get the shading uh, layer here. What I always like to have in my drawings is line, sketch, shading, colour and then a background. Uh, normally I just have the one colour but I've got the multiple colours here. Uh, I've got like a little rustic version. I was just doing that for fun so he's just normally not being seen. So what we can do with the shading is if we start with this I find the best trick is figure out your light source. So of course with this one, we're gonna have the electricity be the light source. So what we have to do after that is create the shadow. Now the shadow for this, I'm gonna use the create spiral path. And I'm, cause that makes a nice, perfectly round, oh God, it's, a, it's an awkward thing. Sometimes it's better to just click a few times and it helps it behave. Right, we get one of these, right, and we have it about there, I would think. About there. And it'll make sense in a sec what I'm doing. So what I wanna do is when I, a nice saturated blue, very dark, like that. There we go. Easy peasy. Then we'll want to switch back to the normal mode, which is regular Bezier path. And just for a quick example of how this is normally done is if you can picture the light source coming out from this, we want a little shadow underneath this. So that'll come out about there, like so. And I like to use the broad lines because it makes the shading a lot easier as well. So that's another good little tip if you're going to go for this art style. About there, we'll enter to break it apart and then you can do this all again. And as long as it's in the lines and you can't see any of the crude bits, you tend to be okay. All right, now we want to shade this bit in too. So there we go, nice and symmetrical. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. Perfectly imperfect is always a good trick as well. And that's just with drawing in general, not necessarily shading. But just don't be worried that it's not spot on. That will do. If anything, it looks nicer when it's not perfect. I know that just sounds like a lazy excuse, but it, it's true because I could have easily mirrored this creature and uh, it would have it would have looked nice and symmetrical, but it, it's not what people want. So what did I do? I altered the leg of this, the back leg. This one's straight, and this one's more straight, and these two are more flexed out, uh, just like the side part. You'll if you look carefully, you'll start to see little alterations. That's not perfectly in line with that, and. And then of course there's the bolt bits that really break it up. These were done separately, these aren't just mirrored. So there's there's little differences. And it's those subtle little things that uh, just make it seem more real. All right, so we have that and I'm trying to figure out, I guess there would be a, a bit of a shadow here as well. So just shading there. Right, so just on a small scheme, if we zoom in on this, there we go. And then say for this part we want, because this is the lightest part, and I like to do three tones of shading if I can, if I feel it's necessary. So about there, like a little crescent. Now we don't want this to actually be shading, we want this to be lighter, but we want this to be lighter with a yellow tone, like so. Right, and we'll just try and pretty it up a little bit. There we go. 
like so, probably lighten it up like that. Okay, so that's my shadow. Obviously, you look at that and you go, oh, it's not very good. But the trick is, it's too much. So what I wanna do is take the opacity on the layer, this is the layer opacity, knock it down to about 50%. There we go. We've got like a bit of shading. So imagine the whole thing just done like that. It's quite nice. I mean, I think this circle probably could be doing without being, uh, could probably benefit from not being so perfectly round. So we're gonna try and go for an oval shape like that. And I think that works a little bit better. Let me know what you think anyway, but there, that's just a quick example. I'm sure I'll get better at um, showing examples anyway. And obviously I'm gonna add a lot more little bits of detail and I'll end up doing the whole thing. I'll probably cut to showing the finished thing where it's all shaded, let you see how it looks at the end. And of course, if you wanna copy the shading technique, then you can. Okay, and we're back, right? So I've added all the shading uh, I do apologize if I haven't been explaining this too well. Hopefully when I check the recordings, it has came out a bit better than it sounds in my head. Uh, so there was just one last little touch, a little tip or trick if you're new to Inkscape that you might wanna know. So as you can see down here, I've got this and this kind of indicates depth. So what I wanna do is cut out some of the shadow of it so I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that because it is just a handy little trick so see we want this bit and then just a little bit of there like that so this is the bit that we want to be light so we've we've just connected that all together we've got that now we press shift and we click on the shadow as well we go to path we go to difference and it cuts it out so now it looks like there's a little bit of light just shining inside that uh, inner joint part. And then we're just gonna do the same on this side. So once again, we're gonna have the light just touching there. It's gonna reach up here and then we're gonna loop it round there. And then we're gonna reconnect it again and it's gonna follow this line and join up. Then we shift and select the shadow, go to difference, a uh, path, then difference, and there we go. So that was just the final touch. So yeah, that looks very strong. That looks very, um, what's it? It's like, uh, is it like old sci-fi style, isn't it? It's very strong colors. So what I wanna do just to bring it up to the modern era is just tone it down a bit. So obviously you can have it, that's what we had originally, very flat. You could have a little bit of shading. You could have a lot of shading like that. We can bring it right down. Sometimes I hit the 50%. It depends what I'm working with. I think a little bit more depth, about the 70% mark, that looks nice. About the 70%. Obviously the max looks cool maybe a bit too much if we just tone it down 70 maybe 65 we'll go 65 then and that looks nice like that right so that that's finished and that was my brief look at what we're doing behind the scenes making uh making these monsters now remember the uh the little Oh God, the rustic version of this I showed you before. Because we've got the shading on the top layer with transparency, we can just click this button and we can see what he looks like with the same shading on. So that's quite cool, isn't it? I always quite like that. So there he is, rustic form with all the shade. Can turn that off. Oh, no, we've turned the shading off. Okay, so we can turn the color off and he goes back to that version. And then we've got this color version too. So, ooh, ah. Eee, ooh. I do quite like this one. Like he's missing missing an arm, uh, a leg, I mean, and he's had to get a little replacement. I think that adds like a nice bit of character and there's just little dots of rust. It's very nice anyway. So yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, we're making a shard TCG game. We'll have that link in the Discord, but if you just like to follow for the art itself, Fair enough, you know, to each is their own. 
But um, any questions, of course, I'll answer it later because I can just ramble on through ages otherwise. Great. Right, I'll see you next time, guys. Right. Bye-bye.